Hello all, my name is Mason Kluatra. I'm a researcher in the field of nonlinear systems and control theory. Today I am so excited to talk to you about stability theory for nonlinear systems. This is so much harder to do than study the stability of linear systems, and this work was truly pioneered by the Russian mathematician Alexander Lyapunov in the late 1800s. He showed that despite us not always being able to find an analytic solution to a set of nonlinear differential equations, with enough elbow grease, we can truly describe its stability. And that is incredibly powerful. This video series is going to dive into a lot of aspects of nonlinear systems, talk about their intricacies. But in this first part, I just want to show you an example of why nonlinear systems are beautiful. Generally, there are behaviors unique to nonlinear systems that linear systems cannot demonstrate. The second order nonlinear system of differential equations and polar coordinates demonstrates one of those behaviors. Rather than try to tell you what it is right off the bat, let's just try to discover this behavior organically together. So we are told that the radius r changes with a rate equal to the sine function of itself, and that theta changes with a rate, a constant rate of negative one. And lastly, this constraint just says, we're only gonna focus on this system with radius between zero and two pi. Now, when you see this, because we don't normally work in polar coordinates, you may try to convert it back to rectangular or Cartesian coordinates. So if you did that, you would recall um, these equations that let us transfer back and forth. You can actually take the time derivative of x and y here and through the product rule, recover a system of differential equations in the Cartesian coordinates. But this doesn't really tell us a whole lot. This is quite hard to analyze. One thing to note though, is that if we plug in x and y are equal to zero, we see the x dot and y dot are equal to zero. That's a stationary or an equilibrium point. That's the only thing that we are going to take away from that analysis. But let's go back and just focus on the original system of equations in polar coordinates. So the first thing to notice is that while theta is never going to stop evolving, r, the radius, can be stationary. So in fact, we see that r dot is equal to zero, of course, when sine is equal to zero. That only happens when the radius is equal to zero or pi. Now, what happens on either side of the radius r equal to pi? If we are between zero and pi, notice that sine of r in that range is positive, so r dot is positive and the radius will be growing. Lastly, if we are between pi and two pi, the opposite r dot is negative, so the radius would be decreasing in this region. The natural thing to do at this point, of course, would be to try to plot some trajectories of the system and see what happens. With this graph here, let's label a few things that we know. First up, if we start with radius pi, my radius has to stay at that length for all time. I am not stationary, however, my angle with respect to the x-axis is always going to be decreasing. That is, I would travel clockwise around this circle. That is quite an interesting behavior. Notice that this is not an equilibrium point, but rather kind of a pseudo equilibrium point. My radius is constant, but my angle is always changing. For the mathematically inclined of you, we would call this set of points in the Cartesian plane with radius pi an invariant set. That is, if I start on this set I am stuck there for all time. I can never leave it. Now, on the other hand, we know that if I start directly at the origin, that I am going to be stuck there forever. I don't move. We derived that when we looked at the differential equations in the rectangular coordinates. However, there are a few other points to consider. For instance, what if I started just a hair away from the origin. Well, in this range, we know that my radius is going to increase. And of course, I'm going to continue to evolve with a angle changing at a constant rate of negative one. So I would spiral outward and tend towards 
this cyclic behavior or the invariant set that I was just talking about. That seems pretty useful. I started at a random point. I did not tend to an equilibrium, but rather I tended towards an invariant set. That's pretty cool. On the other hand, if I start outside of this circle of radius pi, we know that down here that my radius is going to be decreasing. So I'm going to be pulled towards this invariant set. And this happens no matter where I start out here with radius greater than pi. So notice that no matter where I start, unless I start at the origin, I am going to tend towards this cycle. It turns out that we call this invariant set that I've been alluding to a limit cycle. In this case, we have a stable limit cycle because if I start on either side of it, I'm going to tend towards it as time goes to infinity. This is just one of the very beautiful behaviors that nonlinear systems could demonstrate. Again, this is unique to nonlinear systems. It's not possible to have a limit cycle in a linear system. In this video series, we're going to explore several unique behaviors of nonlinear systems, but more importantly, we are going to characterize the stability of different nonlinear systems through the eyes of Lyapunov. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope that you stay tuned for more.